Naomi. And I'm Josh. Um, and we are the co-presidents of Southampton Christian Union. Yeah, so um, we're just a group of students who are passionate and excited about sharing the good news Jesus Christ with our friends and course mates on campus. Um, for us, this looks like a lot of different things, um, but all centered around uh, trying to build community and share this good news with, with those around us. Um, one, of, uh, one of the things that we're doing this week is uh, Unite, which is this meeting that we're doing. Um, a great chance to be equipped and, um, and, and unite together uh, and sharing this, this good news with those around us. Um, so this involved uh, listening to a talk later on given by Callum and also a chance to discuss with others and uh, catch up as well. Um, we also have times of worship too where we can unite over um, praising and giving glory to our God. Yeah and um, we're going to start with going into breakout rooms and um, to get to know one another better. If you do want to be in a breakout room with someone you know um, send a quick message to Suku committee or Suku screen um, and hopefully we'll be able to arrange that for you. Um, the idea behind these breakout groups is just to get to know one another a little bit better to build community um, and we really want the CU to be a group that is welcoming um, and supports and loves one another um, and a group that others want to be part of because they can see the difference that Jesus makes in our lives. Um, so I think one of the best ways to do that is um, to spend time chatting together and being intentional with our relationships. So that's what we're going to do now. Um, in your breakout groups, we'd love if you could introduce um, yourself, your course, where you're from. Um, and our icebreaker question for today is, if you had to eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? So yeah, have fun chatting in your breakout rooms. Give me a moment. <laughs> <laughs> sure <thing. laughs> what was the question again, sorry? If you could only eat one meal for the rest of your life, what would it be? Mm. Why don't you kick us off, Josh? Oh, put you on the that's spot. An interesting one. <laughs> um, I'm afraid, yeah, it's probably not really a meal, but I do love a bowl of cereal. Um, and uh, yeah, so maybe like three bowls of cereal could constitute a meal. Um, okay. <laughs> maybe, maybe not. Um, <laughs> I, I do like a chicken tikka masala. That, that would probably be the one for me. I think you'd have to eat a lot of cereal yeah. <laughs> to get full enough. Um, if Let's say you were to stick with cereal. What three cereals would it be? Ooh, um, I do like crunchy nut cereal, yeah. um, rice krispies, and a bit of a, a treat would be uh, the kind of uh, like blueberry wheats, which, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, probably those. Um, <laughs> great, are we good to go down? Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Um, we hope you had a really good time in your breakup rooms, uh, getting to know each other and answering that question. Um, we're now going to go into a time of worship together where we'll join together praising our God um, and then we'll, uh, we'll go into uh, hear our speaker after that. Let the King of my home be the mountain where I run the fountain I drink from, oh, he is my song. Let the king of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. Cause you are good, good, oh, you are good. Good, you're good. Oh. Let 
the king of my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the ways oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are good continuing with our series adorning the gospel looking at uh, the gospel gives confidence in the face of opposition um, and we've got Callum talking to us tonight so I'm hoping there he is hello Callum hey can you hear me okay we can hear you all good um we'd love if you could introduce yourself who you are what you do and where you're from Right, if I can remember all that on Friday <laughs> evening. Um, yeah, my name's Callum. I'm uh, head of young adult ministry at Buff Bar Church, or HEM for short, as I like to say. And I've uh, lived in Southampton for seven or eight years now, but I'm originally from the US. And uh, yeah. If you ask me any other questions, I've forgotten them now. <laughs> no, that was all the questions. Um, but we've got I've got a following one. I don't know whether we prepped you for this, but have you oh, got no. okay. a, a fun fact that you can share with everyone about yourself? Oh um a fun. I don't know if it's a fun fact. Um uh, yeah. Just picking one really. Um I'll go with my fun fact is that I um, once did a lot of acting. And so some of the above bar church students actually did a, quite a bit of digging on Facebook, were able to find some quite embarrassing photos from my theater days. Um, if you're extremely bored, um, you can do that. But yeah, yeah, I like I like acting. And I'm currently addicted to Line of Duty. Nice. My parents are watching that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> cool. Um, so Charlotte's going to come and um, do our Bible reading um, today and pray for Callum before he speaks. Um, so we're going to be reading from Romans 8 verses 31 to 39. Um, be great if you could grab your Bible, a notebook, and pen. Um, yeah, I always find it really helpful to make notes during talks. Over to you, Charlotte. 
What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, then who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Jesus Christ, who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah, Lord, we just thank you for this time which we can spend together um, and learn more about you. We thank you that um, Callum can be here tonight and we just pray that um, that his talk will, will give us all something to take away from and that it will help us in feeling more confident um, about sharing our faith with those around us, um, particularly in the face of opposition. Yeah, Lord, we thank you um, in your name. Amen. Amen. Thanks so much, Charlotte. Thanks so much, um, Silent and CU, for inviting me and for giving me one of the most amazing uh, passages in, well, in the world, in literature, and in the Bible. And um, yeah, Romans 8 in itself, the whole chapter is just stunning. And we see in Romans 8 how, how Jesus and what he did on the cross um, and his resurrection, his, his, his coming back to life, um, how that changes everything. It changes everything. Um, it changes our past. So if you look at chapter 8, verse 1, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, who put their trust in Jesus. The message of the cross is that um, uh, that Jesus died for us, for our sin, for all the ways that separate us from God. And when we put our trust in what Jesus did, no longer in ourselves, but in him, we then are in him. He takes on our sin. We get his goodness and he changes us. And so we see in verse one, he changes our past. But there's no condemnation. When you come to know Jesus, when you come to trust Jesus, your past, all the darkness, your sin, it's wiped away. It's gone. There is no condemnation. It changes our past. I think you might have got the point by now that uh, the gospel, according to Romans 8, changes our past, our future, and it impacts our present as well. And the gospel changes every part of life. Uh, not just some bits and not just on Sunday. Every part of life is impacted. And that's what Romans 8, 31 to 39 is all about. Um, so it starts with verse 31. What then shall we say in response to these things? Well, what's these things? Um, well, really, it's all of the past chapter 8. But, I mean, if you look at verse 28, this astonishing statement, we know that in all things... God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. I'm just going to read that again. We know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. That's an astonishing statement. He's saying that in everything we go through in life, God is at work for those who love him, who he's, he's called, who he's chosen, who, who he's adopted who put their trust in Jesus. And he then goes on to just kind of show, show that how, how, how God, um, 
how our, our present is, is changed by Jesus, by the cross. So verse 32, he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Just, I mean, every verse we could, we, you could spend eternity studying Romans chapter eight, but, and I'm not going to do that. Don't worry. Especially, well, it might feel like that though, if I keep dropping. Um, but I mean, just look at 32. He who did not spare his own son. Think about that. God, the father, the son, and the Holy spirit have eternally existed in the most perfect loving union beyond even what we can imagine far beyond an intensity and faithfulness and purity than the, than the most, the greatest loving relationship you could possibly think of. They've always been, and they've always been in this loving relationship. There is nothing in the world the father could value more than the son. And yet it says he, he did not spare even his own son. Father, son, and spirit willing for Jesus to go to the cross to rescue us. He gave him up for us all. How will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? That's not saying that he's going to give us whatever we want. If we pray and ask, you know, for a sweet, he's going to give us a sweet. No. But it's saying, go on, verse 33. Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It's God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus, who died more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is interceding for us. The key word in this whole passage is no, or nobody, or no one. You see these rhetorical questions. Who will bring any charge against those who God has chosen? Nobody. I mean, yeah, you might get accusations thrown against you, but who cares? God's justified you. Nothing the world could possibly throw can go against God. It won't stick. Who then is the one who condemns? Nobody. Now we know, like we have an enemy who accuses us and there might be people who try and condemn you in this life, but when you're in Christ, I mean, it might as well be throwing a paper towel at the ocean. It's not gonna work. You're in Christ. He died and rose again, is at the right hand of God interceding for us. We could discuss that, but we should go on. The father gave up his son for you. He's not going to abandon you now. That's what it's saying here. And then it says, what shall separate us from the love of Christ? Look, verse 35. Shall trouble or hardship or persecution, famine, famine nakedness, danger or sword? Remember, this is Paul who wrote this. Paul, the apostle Paul, and in... Um, in the book of Acts, uh, we see he goes through a lot of stuff. Also in um, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 27, this is like a little bit of a list of all the things that happened to Paul in his life. Um, he says, I've been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely, been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews 40 lashes minus one, that's whips, whipping. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, and in danger from false believers. I've labored and toiled and have gone without sleep. I've known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. Okay. Put your life into perspective. Exams and dissertation don't seem too bad. Yeah. And yet Paul says, verse 38, I'm convinced neither death, life, angels, demons, neither present nor future, nor any powers, height, depth, anything, anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Our past is impacted by the gospel. It's been wiped clean. We're a new creation when we put our trust in Jesus. We don't have to live looking in the rearview mirror. Our future has changed. We have an amazing future ahead of us, a glorious one, a new creation. And our present 
It's actually saying, you know, life is hard. There's going to be a lot of things that are thrown at you, especially actually if you follow Jesus. I mean, look how his life ended. But that's the key thing. When you follow Jesus, it's the way of the cross, but it's also the way of the resurrection. There is nothing this world can throw at you that's bigger than God. And God is with us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. And so I just want to close with this thought. Look at verse 39. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation. Paul is almost like just he's saying just there's nothing, 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 nothing. And just in case I missed something, anything else in all creation, verse 39. I wonder what's your anything else? What do you think in your heart? Sometimes you think, oh, well, that separates me from the love of God. You may know in your head, you yeah, know, well, nothing can separate from the love of God. But in reality, is that how you live? Or is that what you really believe at times? It's making very clear here, nothing Nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. But what about loneliness? What about COVID? What about if people reject me or don't like me because of my faith? What about mental health? What about failure? What about this sin that might be particularly popping in your head right now? What's your anything else? because it's good to recognize it. And you know what? Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Jesus went through the darkness and separation from the Father so that even when we feel like it's dark and the Father is far away, he isn't. He's there. So no matter what, he is with us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Whenever you're struggling, please read through this passage and just shout out to the rooftops when it says, you know, who is the one who condemns? No one. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nobody. The gospel changes our past, our future, and our present. Let me pray for you guys. And then I think you're going into groups. Father, I just pray that you would help this to sink in, not just into our heads, but into our hearts. The cosmic reality of the gospel, if it's true, that what Jesus did on the cross means we are new creations. We are forgiven. We are clean. We have Jesus's righteousness. And it means that our future is a glorious one of hope and restoration and redemption. And our present. We might have lost Callum there. Um, um, we'll go into breakout rooms now anyway. Um, um, but thank you so much to Callum for, for leading us in that talk, for, for persevering with that. Um, so we're going to go into um, breakout rooms, discuss the talk. Um, here are here are the questions. Um, yeah, it would be great to just kind of share your thoughts. Um, and if you can get to prayer as well, that would be a real bonus as well. Um, but yeah, let's go into breakout rooms now and enjoy discussing that together. Hey, guys, um, I'm just going to close in prayer. Bye. Oh, dear Lord, thank you so much um, for the truth that was just spoken to us um, through your word um, for all the things that came up there, but that, um, that your cross, it changes our past, our present and our future. Um, and thank you, Lord, that nothing um, can separate us from your love um, and that we are more than conquerors um, through everything that we face. 
Um, and Lord, I pray for um, everybody here. Um, Lord, you've, you've um, heard what we've shared and you know what's in our hearts and minds and um, the things that do trouble us um, and uh, yeah, the hardship that we face. Um, but thank you that you are in those things with us, that you are the comforter, that you are interceding for us, um, but that ultimately we are conquerors, we're more than conquerors, um, that we can claim your victory that you gave us, Lord. Um, and so we pray that we always bring those things to you when we're struggling, when we think that um, um, we can't feel your love or know your love. Um, Lord, help us to, to speak your truth into those situations um, and father we pray that um, that affects um, how we um, minister to those around us um, to our non-christian friends um, and we pray lord that um, yeah you help us um, to show them that even though we do face troubles in our lives uh, that you are always with us and that you have given us the victory in this life and um, in eternity. And we pray for our week ahead. Um, Lord, help us to speak and share this amazing truth that we have to those around us. Um, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Thanks so much, Joe. Um, really helpful to be uh, to be guided and worship together. Um, and we really look forward to time in the future where we'll be able to worship together in person. Great. So a few announcements for you for this coming week. Um, so something that we're really excited about is uh, next Thursday, we'll be running a meeting called uh, Testimony Thursday. Um, this is something, uh, uh, there'll be a one-off at the moment, but we're hoping we'll be, we'll have another few sessions coming up. Um, great opportunity to hear from current CU members um, about how this past um, COVID year has been for them, um, especially facing hardships. Um, and it's great to see um, see them living out what um, this uh, this passage has taught us today about knowing that um, we can't be separated from God's love. Um, so that will be this Thursday coming. Um, be a great opportunity to um, to join together and listen to those people. Um, and that will be uh, in the evening at some point. Yes um and we just think it's so important that prayer is um a big component um of life um in CU um so we think it's important to pray um and um yeah give the week over to God um look to God at the start of our week and pray for our campus um and our housemates and our course mates so Monday mornings we have BPM at eight o'clock on Zoom um we know it's quite early um, but it, yeah, it's such a good time to, um, yeah, centre ourselves on God and just um, give the week over to him. So we would love to see you there, um, if you can drag yourself out of bed for them. <laughs> um, and then we have hall groups on, uh, we have iCafe on uh, Monday evening, which is a place for international students um, to find community and also a place for UK nationals to meet with international students and welcome them into the CU community. Um, and then Tuesday we have hall groups. Um, yeah, it can be hard being a Christian in halls, um, living with random people. Um, so these are just places where, yeah, we can read the Bible and pray together, um, build friendships within our halls and think about, yeah, how we can best um, share the gospel with those that we're living with. Mm. Yeah, and next Friday we'll be having our pre night games again. Um, thanks for those who managed to make it out today, um, despite um, changing weather. Um, yeah, so next week we'll have it on at uh, 4.30, um, hopefully weather permitting. Um, and this is a great opportunity to join together um, in community together, uh, getting to know one another, um, but being united so that when we are going out in uh, evangelism, sharing um, the hope that we have with people, um, we can do that together with joy. Um, so um, yeah, do join us then. It's such a great opportunity to to meet new people, especially after after so long not being able to. Um, so that's four thirty next next Friday. Um, and just a quick reminder: if you signed up for picnics in the park, and um, that is happening tomorrow, um, hopefully the weather holds out. Um, I, I had my picnic last week. We saw a bin catch fire and the fire brigade came and put it out, which was quite exciting and um, a highlight of the picnic, I think. <laughs> um, yeah, so if you if you are um, having your picnic tomorrow, we hope you have a really lovely time. Uh, yes, and um, Libby's put in there, if you, if you do sign up for, uh, there's a sign up form on Suku Notice Board on Facebook and you can get um, some goodies as well for, to watch it alongside. Um, so uh, yeah, do join us for that. Um, great, that's the, the, that's the end of Unite tonight. Thanks so much for sticking with us amidst all the um, unpredictable things that's happened this evening. Um, but yeah, a real joy to see you all this evening and uh, yeah, we hope to see you soon. Great, thanks everyone. Um, and hopefully see you soon. Bye.